How meta can I go? That's the question here. Uh, I recently did a YouTube live stream where I said that I want to get back to posting more regularly here. And I asked for your requests and suggestions because I'm genuinely curious. I, I want to know what are the kinds of things that you want to see more of on this channel. So I got lots of great feedback and ideas already. Uh, I'll, I'll include a link down below if you want to check out the live stream and see what people have said. You can also use the comments below this video if you've got your own uh, suggestions or requests. Um, something really interesting came in from Nimzo. Nimzo actually had a few ideas, but this one in particular intrigued me. Uh, live reacting to your own live sets and speaking about what was going through your mind. Uh, pausing and demonstrating the behind the scenes thoughts during improvisation. When I think about players that I like, players that I admire, if I could get a glimpse behind the scenes and, and have them break down like what they were thinking when they played the things that they played, uh, sure, yeah, I, I would love that. I think that would be great. The idea of doing that myself, watching a video of myself play and then making a video where I break down what I played, um, how meta can I go? It, it feels uh, funny, not funny, haha, -ha, but like uncomfortable to me to, to do that. I, um, I'm not sure about it. So I'd love some more feedback here. If it's just Nimzo that thinks that's a cool idea, uh, maybe I'll, I'll hold off for the time being. But if enough of you say, you know, yeah, let's do that, then uh, maybe I'll find a way to get out of my discomfort zone and and do it if it would be of value to you of service to you um so please do let me know in the meantime there is a video of me that i do want to share here and to talk about uh, i'm not going to get into what was i thinking because because actually i'm not improvising in this clip i'm just playing the melody of a song uh, but there's a way that i'm approaching it uh, a mindset and also some technical stuff that I want to share with you because uh, I think this is a cool way to play the guitar. Lots of my favorite guitar players do stuff like this. Uh, Mark Knopfler, Doyle Bramhall, Blake Mills, uh, John Mayer, of course, uh, has a real vocal way with the guitar. So uh, without further ado, let me just play this clip for you. It's about a minute long. And then uh, I'll talk about it a little bit. Not, not so much about improvisation, but just uh, playing the guitar. <laughs> So if that kind of playing is interesting to you, then uh, I want to talk about some some ways to, to get there that you can incorporate into your own style. Uh, one is if you are a pick-oriented player, you're going to want to put your pick aside. In this clip, I'm playing with my thumb. Uh, sometimes when I'm going for a vocal thing, I'll play with my thumb. Sometimes I'll play with my index finger. Sometimes it'll be some combination of the two. Uh, I find that playing with a pick is, well, it's, you know, it's a hard piece of plastic hitting steel 
strings, it's going to be clicky, which is not something that we typically get from a vocal performance, it's that, that clickiness. Also, there's just this big uh, spike in the attack, you know, the, the note pops out and then gets, uh, starts to decay and, uh, and all. So when we play with our thumb or fingers, we can we can play softer, we can find this kind of midpoint, and from that midpoint in the dynamic, we can get louder when we want to, we can get softer when we want to, um, we can pop or uh, scrape, or we, there's a lot of things that we can do to shape the note, and that's, to me, more what singers do. Singers are not so um, flat, at least uh, singers that I like, you know, they're not flat, they're emotive, they're expressive, and I just find that I can get more out of the string uh, with with my hands. I, I don't have any nails. I'm not sure if this will focus or not. But uh, you can see I've just got kind of nubs here. Um, so the sound is soft and, and fleshy. And, and that's that's the sound that, that I like. Kind of gets me in the headspace. Also playing finger style uh, with thumb or index or both kind of it puts me in a better position for string muting, which is important when you're going for a vocal style. We're not going to play double stops. We're not going to uh, let things ring over each other. We really just want to hear one note at a time. And so when I'm playing this way, I feel like I have more control back here to, to mute the strings that I'm not using. So that's another reason to play finger style. Uh, something else that I'm doing here is playing along one string. Uh, mostly on the A string. This is a, a song that's in B flat, and so I'm kind of playing in first position, thinking about like uh, that B flat at the first fret and kind of going up, up and down the string from there. I don't play the whole song that way, but that's a lot of what I'm doing. I find that going up and down one string helps me feel more like a singer because if you play in position, you can make a big leap without doing very much at all. Uh, here you've really got to reach for something and that's more, if you sing, you know, like uh, your voice doesn't have the same uh, tension and resonance across an octave or two. Uh, it's, it's a physical thing. And so I find that playing up and down one string gets me more in that headspace. Uh, another thing that's really helpful is thinking about the words. Uh, I think I said this before, if I didn't, uh, uh, should be clear, I'm not improvising in this clip. I'm playing the vocal melody to a song. The song is called Something You Got. It's uh, written by Chris Kenner, same songwriter who wrote Land of a Thousand Dances, which is a song you might know. So I'm really thinking about what are the words to this song. Uh, that helps me shape the notes. Some, you know, the first the first phrase is something you got. So got ends with a T. It's short. There's probably a technical name for what that sound is if you if you study the voice. But I haven't studied voice in any technical way, so I'm just gonna talk like a lay person, which is what I am here. Got ends with a T. It's a hard sound. I'm not going to let that note ring out. I'm going to choke it off just like got. Uh, then the next line is something you got makes me work all day. Okay. Day is different from got. So when you think about the words, words have a shape. Also, Words, when you sing them, don't tend to fall on the grid of time of eighth notes and sixteenth notes in the same way that we might do when we are playing guitar. When we play guitar, you know, we tend to feel the rhythm. You know, sometimes we're going back and forth between rhythm guitar and melody. So we're used to doing things that are kind of rhythmically uh, clear in the subdivision. But singers don't always do that either because stylistically they, they want to swagger and sway or and or because it's just how the language works. I mean, not all syllables are created equal. You know what I mean? Like, just because something is one syllable 
doesn't mean that something else that's one syllable has the same shape to it. So uh, I tend when I'm playing vocally to, to kind of get a little blurrier with the rhythm. I'm still thinking eighth notes and sixteenth notes, but they're not uh, equally weighted. Also, in a more kind of just intentional swagger and sway thing, I know that the drummer is playing eighth notes on the hi-hat, and if I land right where those are, uh, or like Rich Hinman is, is playing rhythm guitar here, and he's going boom, chang, chang, one, chang, chang, one, chang. So if I play a melody that lines up square on that backbeat, or, or square on where the drummer is playing the hi-hat, it's going to kind of blend in. And if I want to have a little bit more dimensionality uh, to what I'm playing, if I land just a little early or a little late, that gives it its own space. Uh, so that's something I think about when I'm trying to play vocally. Also, what are the words? What is the story? Is there something I can do on the guitar that helps actually convey the story? The story of this song is somebody who is uh, really in love with somebody and uh, is happy to work all day just to come home and bring home all of their pay money, all of their pay, uh, and either give it to the, give it to their lover or spend it on their lover. Uh, that's how enraptured, uh, they are with this person. Is that the right word? I think so. Enamored, enamored of this person. Uh, and then another verse, you know, something you got keeps me home every night. Uh, something you got makes everything all right. So that's that's the character who is singing this song. They're just madly in love. Uh, and I, I try to convey that. It's not just notes from a scale. Uh, it's it's a story. Oh, a guitar. Uh, so speaking of notes and scales, there, there's two two other things that I want to share with you. Uh, one is when you play up and down a string, like I talked about, or playing up and down the A string, it gets you out of playing in boxes, whether it's a pentatonic box or a caged, caged kind of form. Uh, I, I use those things too. There's nothing wrong with pentatonics or caged or whatever, but it just doesn't feel very vocal to me. So. Uh, it can kind of trick me into playing my guitar stuff, you know, guitar vocabulary and adding little turns at the end of notes that don't need to be there just because they happen to lay so nicely um, in that box or that shape. So playing up and down one string, I find that I, I don't put as much mindless uh, murmur murmur stuff at the end of phrases. I really have to shape what I'm doing and, and be really clear about it. So uh, that's that's a, another thing about playing up and down the string. The last thing that I want to talk about is chords and how they kind of bias us towards reaching for certain notes. We're guitar players. If you know the chord is B flat and you're trying to find a melody note, you are going to tend to think that it's one of these notes. I have an exercise that I give to students all the time where I'll ask them to play a simple melody like happy birthday or you know just some nursery rhyme or something. And it's it's all pretty easy until there's a note in the melody that doesn't immediately fall into the chord that you think should be happening at that moment. Um, and then they get this puzzled look on their face like wait the chord is C I can't find, the melody note is not in that chord. What's happening? It's, it's, a, um, it's a funny look. I've seen it a, a lot. Um, so for example, like if we were going to play, I don't know, Hey Jude or something. So that's in F. No problem. That's in the chord. So that's the sixth on F. We don't usually expect that. So I've, I've seen guitar players like go up and down trying to find 
that note and, and they just can't find it because nobody expects it that the sixth is going to be the, the melody note then it goes to C C7 and then the next melody note is F again that that note it's not in the chord it shouldn't be there so students they, they look around they can't find the note uh, it's a fun exercise. You should try it yourself. Think of, of a song that's got a simple melody and simple chords, but when you really get into it, vocal melodies are not dictated by familiar guitar forms. Vocal melodies are melodies. So really do what you can to forget that you are a guitar player when you're trying to play in a vocal way. Just focus on what is the melody. Hear it in your head your ears, your heart, wherever you hear the music, and find it on the guitar, but without the bias of, well, it must be in a chord because that's how music works, right? Uh, sometimes it is. So this is my, this is my lesson on uh, how to make the guitar sing, how to uh, get a, a vocal quality out of the guitar. I hope that you enjoyed this. Um, if you did, please make sure to like this video, and even more importantly, please hit that subscribe button. You see that, that little red guitar pick in the corner? That's it. Click on that, subscribe, helps this channel grow, and then I'll just keep on doing it, and you'll know when the next one comes around. Uh, in the meantime, stay tuned and take good care. Guitar tips. Guitar tips Just the tips Just for you Guitar